everyone, it's me, Molly! Molly of the Nolly. Let's go! She's Molly of the Nolly. <laughs> By plane, a sled, or snowshoe, she is ready to explore. From Cactoba down to Juno, always wanting to learn more. With her best friend, to be always by her side. And Trini! Discovering the outdoors on adventures day and night. Come along with Wally. Wally. Through fields of fire, we come along with Wally. Wally. From Tundra to the sea. Must see Joe. Let's go! Wally of the night. or something. I wonder what it's doing in the woods. Well, I wonder if this boat realizes a storm is coming. Ready? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Hail storm! Queen Mary! It's a bone. No, there's something on it. Suki, let me see that. You won't get it that way. Mmm, yum, dry fish. Beautiful markings. This belonged to our ancestors. You found it yesterday? Uh-huh. Suki found it. It's probably a million years old. <laughs> Not that old. Oh, it looks like some sort of tool. Maybe used for scraping hides. I have a friend who works at the museum. I'd like to show him. You may have made a real archaeological discovery. Can we come too? Please, please! Are you sure you want to? We have to leave early. Are you kidding? Yes! Okay! <laughs> Actually, it's good for me too. I have to buy ten bags of cement and you can help me load them into the truck. Oh, great! Okay. Here we are! We made it! Wow! This place is amazing! I could spend a week in here! Yikes! As long as this strange beaver doesn't move! That's Taogon, not beaver. See, it says Wolverine. These labels have information on them. Wolverines live between five and seven years in the wild. They are good scavengers and are known for their great strength. <laughs> One day, I'll tell you a good story about Dalgon. You kids stick together. I'm going to find my friend. I've got a bone to pick with him. <laughs> okay. What's that? I don't know. Read the information label. Oh, right. It says, Athabascan baby cradle. This baby cradle was made from birch bark, cut from trees, folded, and dried. 
donated by Mr. Vladimir Raboff. Look at this! Nehiluk, also known as the Riverball Game. A traditional Athabascan children's game to teach hunting and fishing skills. How is that a game? I don't know. Wait, it says right here. The ball was thrown into swift moving water and children tried to snag it with barbed sticks. Whoa, we should make this when we get home. Looks like my friend is out for lunch. No way. Now what? Don't worry, I left the bone for him with a note. Now. Are you ready to get that cement? Oh! Hi, Jokes! Ready to see the rest of the museum? Yes! But first, I want to take a picture of these Nehiluk instructions so we'll know how to play. Hey, everyone! Dewey and I are going to show you how to play Nehiluk, a riverball game from long ago. First, find a string. Second, make a ball out of three hoops of willow tied together. Maybe get your grandpa to help. Third, make a spiky stick like this to throw at the ball. Four, tie a string to it so you can pull the ball back. Five, don't go in the water. You have to stay on shore. Ready? A dowsick, malrock. The game is a way to practice hunting and fishing skills. One, two, three. Oh, come on. A dowsick, malrock, pingasrut. Got it. Tilly, the string. Whoa. Oops. <laughs> Hello? Molly, I got a call from my friend at the museum. He said that bone is a very interesting artifact. Woohoo! I knew it! <laughs> Wait, what's an artifact? Grandpa, what's an artifact? It's something that somebody made. At the museum, most artifacts were made long ago. My friend wants to add the bone to an exhibit at the museum. Should we take a ride back there tomorrow? Yes! Bussy Chata. What if this whole area turns out to be full of ancient artifacts? And we just keep finding more and more stuff. And the museum has to build a whole new wing just for our discoveries. What's this? Oh, I just found an ancient dagger. Oh, look, an ancient sun hat. My third one today. Here, the shin bones of the Tuidactyl. Tuidactyl? If I discover it, it's getting named after me. I wonder if they'll put our names in the museum exhibit. What you looking at? I'm checking the museum website to see which exhibit they might put the bone in. <laughs> Maybe it'll go in the Wolverine's mouth. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Isn't that exactly like the washer thing Oscar found by the stream? Copper beads like these two were valuable for the Athabascan peoples for at least a thousand years. It does look like it. You should come with us tomorrow to show it to the museum guy. It's probably an artifact. Uh, I don't actually have it anymore. Where is it? You tied a super important artifact to a kite? I needed a counterbalance. It was the perfect weight. How do we get it down? Hmm, it's too high to climb. This is why I want a train falcon. Maybe we can use this from the Nehilak game. You're going to fish the kite out of the tree? Yep. Stand back. A dowsick, marok, bring a suit. Could take a while. <laughs> a dowsick. One. Oh yeah, a dowsick. Eleven. <sighs> this is taking way too long. It's faster than training a falcon. Sorry about the cut. 
right. That's okay. <laughs> I can fix it. Here you go. One artifact. This is my friend, Olin Benedict. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hi. We learned from elders in your region that this is a tool from before your grandfather was born. It's called Bet-Ak-Ik-Laka. <laughs> Quite an important find, I'd say. See the designs etched into it? Yeah! Those kind of look like raven's feet. What does it do? It's for stripping bark off trees and making baskets. If you'll donate it to us, we'd like to display it right here. Yes! Of course! Yes! <laughs> Thank you. You'll also need a place for the ancient copper bead Oscar found. Oh, you found something too? By the stream, in the same place. You'll probably want to give it its own display case. Well... Actually, Olin Benedict said it was a piece of metal that fell off a lawnmower. Whoops. We're going to put it in our Denali Trading Post Museum anyway. Lawnmower washer. Not a valuable artifact. But the bone tool is now in the real museum. See what the label says? Athabaskan bark stripping tool discovered by Suki Mabray. They put Suki on the card because she's the one who found it. She's super excited. But that's life when you're a famous archaeologist. Get it? <laughs> hey everyone, Molly here to answer your questions about life in Alaska. Julian in California asks, are there other Alaska native games like Nehiluk? There are. Hi, Molly. There's a lot of Alaska native games and we're gonna try and learn some today. Right now we're at Cook Inlet Tribal Council. Our Alaska native ancestors developed traditional games in order to improve their ability to hunt and fish for daily survival in the traditional way of life. The placards have information about the photos they are next to. The Alaskan high kick was played inside in the winter to help develop coordination, upper body strength, and concentration. This display taught us the history of how these games were created, but they didn't teach us how to do the games. Do you know how we could learn to play the games? Well, CITC has videos to show you how to play them, and you guys can borrow my laptop if you want. Yeah! yeah. So which video do you want to watch? The Alaskan high kick. This is the Alaskan high kick. An athlete will start by sitting on the floor with two hands behind him. With one hand, he'll reach across and grab his opposite foot. From here, leaning back on his other hand, he'll take his other foot and plant it on the floor. Not only is Andrew pulling up on the foot he is holding onto, he is also kicking that foot up. You can watch the video and follow along like this. Kick. This is my dad and he used to play. You guys want to try it with a ball? Yeah! <laughs> well, let's see how high you can kick it. Let's go! Oh, oh. Hey, hey. See you later, Molly. Masi Cho, thanks for asking and see you next time.